Welcome back in the Kingdom of Sweden campaign. I'm Jeffrey Villa Hardwell. We are following the campaign of the Swedish King Gustavus Adolphus in the 1648 mode. While plague is taking lives, the hostilities cease between Württemberg and the Protestant Union. Our kingdom is the envy of the world and scientists flock to us to study all kinds of study-worthy things. We are at 88% the strength of the Kaiser. Gustav Horn is marching with his regiments of the Yellow and Blue Brigades to join up with our king. The Scottish Brigade is also sailing down the Elbe. Our king is on his way to Dorgal with his regiment of the Yellow Brigade. The King's Lifeguard of Foot and part of the Blue Brigade are also sailing down to Torgau. A mighty army is being assembled and a great battle lies surely ahead. We are now in the month of February 1630. Our King boards our river craft and sails up the Elbe towards Risa, accompanied by another fleet transporting the Scottish Brigade. Adam von Fassimmen, Gustav Gustafsson von Wasserburg and Gustav Horn are marching southwards overland. A large imperialist army having taken Weimar is now moving in the direction of Erfurt. It is already besieging Erfurt that belongs to our faithful ally, the Duchy of Brunswick. And spring comes, the snow thaws, and with spring comes schools, banks, and the promise of a great battle. Gustav Horn takes the town of Würzen tying down the imperial forces near Leipzig. Adam von Fassimmen goes even further, laying siege upon Leipzig. Having taken Würzen, Gustav Horn marches out to meet the imperials in the battle. Now is the time for great deeds, a time for war between the Kaiser and the King of Sweden, a contest with Saxony as its prize. The Imperials have a versatile army with two Imperial Terriers, Musketeers, Dragoons and Cavalry, but their army seems no match to our blue and yellow regiments. Captain Klaus comes with a small force to reinforce the army of Gustav Horn, which is deployed here in the Swedish formation. Gustav Horn commands the biggest part of the Blue Brigade. Right there at the front is some of the Norbotten foot here, some of their musketeers. They are among the first to open fire at the approaching imperialist forces. And the Blue Brigade Musketeers of the right regiment here are opening fire at the approaching cavalry. It would appear that the enemy is targeting our right wing, their cavalry is now approaching our musketeers clearly with a mind to charge them. The musketeers fire a deadly volley into their faces and they rout them. Over on the other side are some companies of the Yellow Regiment, the King's Life of Foot and their household guard of unheld armed with pole arms. Back to the no bottom foot at the front of the blue regiment. 
the enemy cavalry is skirmishing in front of them, but they are being cut down. And finally, their pick of the enemy army, the Imperial Tertius, are now approaching our lines. They're under heavy fire from our musketeers. They are falling like flies. They are routed. They are charged by our cavalry. And it seems that the edge of the enemy sword has been blunted. The enemy is now in disarray. They are retreating and our cavalry is chasing them down, collecting prisoners. So a day of victory for Gustav Horn. Today. Our enemy has been crushed. A great victory for Gustav Horn, Captain Klaus that had turned up with uh, some mercenaries suffered heavy casualties, but the enemy was utterly defeated. Our uh, Blue Brigade musketeers acquitted themselves well. The Norbotten Regiment also managed to kill 300 of the enemy. Our cavalry did also very well. The prisoners were offered for ransom and they were not ransomed, so they were pressed into service. Gustav Horn is now dreaded by our enemy, he has also gained some command rank. In the meantime, our king is now outside Riza, and uh, there are several enemy armies there under the command of Albrecht Wallenstein himself. He is there and our king attacks him in battle, in a night battle to avoid enemy reinforcements coming to the aid of our enemy and a great battle is about to begin a clash of titans a battle between Gustavus Adolphus and Albrecht Wallenstein Gustav Adolf commands the uh, Yellow Brigade. He has also been reinforced by some companies of the Scottish Brigade. Here is one regiment of the Yellow Brigade on the right. Wallenstein is approaching. The musketeers of the Yellow Brigade have opened fire. And already one of the enemy generals, Jakob the Scard, has fallen. That bodes badly for our enemy. His army is now left without leadership and is likely to falter. Our pikemen are getting ready to receive the enemy cavalry. Our musketeers are firing at the enemy in the distance. Our enemy is approaching from the recessed side of the hill while they are protected from the hill, they are protected from our musket fire, but they are being hit by our, our mortars. Eventually they will have to get to the crest of the hill and then they will be exposed to our, our musket fire here, our mortars are hitting the enemy. You can see the mortars firing. With a large part of the Imperialist army faltering, 
and on the retreat Wallenstein here is left with only a handful of men to take on the King of Sweden. His men bravely march on but they have too big a task ahead of them. Approaching enemy units have uh, come under fire from our Scottish archers and from our mortars. They have been routed also in combination with the fire from the musketeers. Our pikemen move forward to counter the swordsmen and cavalry approaching, but instead they flee. Our lines are holding here an enemy cavalry unit attempts to charge our Scottish musketeers. They fire a volley. The uh, enemy cavalry retreats. And it looks like our lines are going to hold. Our light leather cannons are causing uh, our enemy some trouble. The enemy pikemen here, a small group of them have nearly reached our lines, our musketeers fall back, but that is the end of the enemy strength, here some enemy dragoons came soon near our lines, are being uh, attacked by our cavalry, and the enemy now is in full retreat. The enemy army flees the field, pursue and run them down. Our enemy has been defeated, our king Gustav Adolf here takes the enemy cannon, there are mortars. Wallenstein has been defeated, he has abandoned the field of battle. The death of Jacob the Scarred caused uh, the main imperialist force to scatter. The Yellow Brigade Musketeers acquitted themselves well, as did the Scottish Battalion. They all fought very well, it was a glorious victory, we only lost a small fraction of our army. Wallenstein's army was crushed. And Wallenstein retreats towards Meissen. The rest of the enemy army stay in the area of Luisa and a second battle follows that one. In fact, it is a night battle. It would have been tricky to fight the whole of the enemy force. So first we cause one of the enemy generals to also retreat towards Meissen. Before attacking the rest of the enemy army. So we have gained another victory near Risa. We have been victorious here. As Gustav Born has been near Leipzig, our enemies in the back foot. One more battle, the final battle near Risa. This time our enemy is stronger and more numerous. They have good quality men especially, very many musketeers, our king marches into battle with his yellow regiment and the regiment of Scots and he is reinforced by Captain Samuel. Our king arrays his army for battle in his favorite Swedish formation. In the distance on the left are the approaching reinforcements of Captain Samuel Gustav, while in the center in the distance is the approaching army of our enemy. They are approaching from the recessed side of the hill. Our musketeers on the left have already opened fire. And now we are firing with all guns. Our enemy is once again approaching from the recessed side of a small hill, but they have been stalled by our harrowing musket fire, and uh, not to mention the fire from our artillery. 
Gustav Adolf has brought into battle his dream army. He has the yellow regiment of the Yellow Brigade. He has a regiment of the uh, Scottish Brigade. And of course he has his favorite light artillery. What more would he want it? This is his playground. This is his moment of glory. This is how he wants to show the world how to fight. So you may have just noticed the units of Samuel Gustav have already flanked the enemy. They are the ones coming down from the hill. They have attacked the enemy flank. The uh, musketeers here in the foreground are under fire from our artillery and our musketeers are behind the reset side of the hill. But that's not going to save them here. Uh, uh, the musketeers of Hamilton's regiment in front of the yellow regiment pikemen and mortar fires also hit the enemy lines the enemy musketeers are losing this fight one of uh, Samuel Gustav's units have been routed, it was a, not a, a light unit acting more or less as a fall of hope. Our artillery is massacring the enemy musketeers. And our enemies at the end of their strength, they are trying to rearrange their lines. They seem to have lost their cohesion and their discipline. Some of them seem already prepared to flee. On the right, some of our swordsmen are harassing the enemy's right flank. Here they are, our Zweihander have fallen upon the enemy musketeers and they have almost destroyed one of their companies. They are cutting them to pieces. The rest of the enemy army is under fire from our artillery and musketeers. They are at the end of their strength. The field is strewn with dead imperialist uh, soldiers and now our enemy has been routed. The enemy general has been slain. Our enemy flees the field of battle. But that was just a musketeer. So here our king retreats back behind his Swedish formation because now the enemy pikemen advance forward. They also come under fire from our artillery and musketeers. Why did they wait so long to advance towards our line? So here they are. They're still strong. Under heavy cannon fire and musket fire, the enemy pikemen are now prepared to advance over the crest of the hill. Our fallen hopes have been routed. Samuel Gustav's men have been dispersed and now is the moment for our pikemen to prove themselves. So all pikemen advance forward into a push of pike with the imperialist pikemen. The odds are even in terms of numbers, but hard pressed, tired, disheartened our enemy 
retreats through the battlefield and our cavalry is now free to chase the routing enemy. Gustavus Adolphus, our glorious king, has won another battle. The enemy flees. They have been defeated. They retreat in shame. They are in tatters. And our king is collecting prisoners. Captain uh, Rene's army was completely destroyed. What does it say? The reinforcements were under Johann Philip. I'm not sure they should have been under Samuel Gustav. In any case, they were also lost, but the Yellow and Scottish regiments suffered minimal casualties and acquitted themselves well. It was a glorious victory by our King Gustavus Adolphus. The Prisoners were not ransomed, so they were pressed and Swedish service. There is still an imperialist force at Risa, while the main imperialist army has retreated towards Meissen, where Wallenstein also is. Gustavus Adolphus takes the battle to the enemy once again. One last battle for Risa. Risa is now in our hands as is Wurzen, but the battle is not yet over. Leonard the Fearless comes over with some more Scotsmen. We shall slaughter them, my lord. He is really Robert Monroe under another name. Here he is Robert Monroe, 32 men, also has some. Uh, uh, Men under his command, Captain Johann Philip joins them. The main army is the army of Gustavus Adolphus, and the last remaining force of the Imperialists is commanded by Captain Theodore, some 1800 men. It is a relatively easy battle compared to the previous one. Gustavus comes with the main force, Captain Johann Philip with a smaller force and the enemy was easily defeated. All of Christendom will be awed by the victory we have won here today. Here are the outskirts of Risa. The enemy was defeated once again. The field is ours, Risa is ours, there's no dispute. We have won a great battle, a glorious battle, a massive battle with several armies. The enemy has been crushed. They accept a ransom for the rest of their prisoners and everyone retreats towards Meissen. Leipzig is defended only by a tiny garrison. Still in the month of March, a small rebel army is defeated by Sverke von Dergitz and Pomerania near Rostock, with practically no casualties on our side. A, another battle between Elias Skinner, Skinner and the rebel army is also decisive. We just lose it. A couple of men. 
And uh, here is the situation in Saxony. Gustav Horn with the Blue Brigade is north of Leipzig. Adam von Falzimmen is besieging Leipzig. Gustav Gustafsson uh, Garrison's Wurzen mostly with mercenaries. Gustavus is at Riza. Riza is garrisoned by Robert Bonro, also known as Leonard the Fearless, while Joan McKees is already at the outskirts of Meissen. At the head of a small Scottish force, together with Johan Casimir from Velen, who commands another small force, mostly mercenaries. Back to Leipzig and to Prince Ferdinand. The Austrians are not finished yet. Relief arrives under several imperialist generals led by French. The Scard Ernesto Montecuculi is among them. They are tasked with breaking the siege to rescue Prince Ferdinand, who has barricaded himself in Leipzig. They succeed in this. Gustav Gustafsson vastly outnumbered lifts the siege, but Gustav Horn and our King Gustavus Adolphus are not far away. The scene has been set for another great battle.